Hello everybody and welcome to DC Fine Art. Today we're going to be working with the Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pins and we'll be working on creating a strawberry using these brush pins and also working on those highlights, how to kind of use your white Pit Artist Pin to be able to create either a lighter tone, creating a bright highlight, or just using them just because you want to tone a color down and make it more of a pastel or maybe a softer color. Or you could be using it because maybe you went a little bit too dark and you're wanting to change it and just make it a little bit lighter, then you could do that also. So let's go ahead and turn this around and let's get started on this video. Okay, so I am going to be working with the marker paper by Strathmore. And so we're gonna go ahead and use this. Usually I like using the um, Bristol Smooth for marker paper, but this time we're just gonna go ahead and use this. This seems to be pretty good anyway, but really in all reality, we're really wanting to test out these um, Pit Artist prints. Not really test them out, because I know I have already used them several times, but the whole backing behind it is how to use this. We're gonna do something really simple. Um, I picked a strawberry. The reference photo will be listed in the description below. So if any of you guys um, want the same kind of reference photo that I used, I do have that. It is from Pixabay, free to use. And what I'm gonna do is basically use all these colors. I've got reds, I got my greens, I got some purples and some blues here. Um, I think this one's a blue. Yeah, it's, a new, it's another hard blue. But anyways, um, and then I also got some whites. So if you're unfor sure on how to use these whites, I know I had a subscriber that asked me about the whites in the Pit Artist uh, pins and kind of like what to use them for, how to use them in with the rest of your um, pins here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all these colors maybe kind of give or take on the purples, um, maybe on that one, I don't know, might throw it in there. But um, we're also gonna be using these whites and what I do with them on how I make my ink or my brush pen artwork. So let's go ahead and what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to make a um, chart right here just listing um, the number, I usually do the number on these just because it's a lot easier than having to write out the name like Pink Matter Lake. That's a really long name. Instead, I'm just going to write out 129 and that'll be much easier and I'm going to put the color next to it. And so that way, whenever I'm working on my strawberry, I can see the colors that I have and I can see what closely fits to the colors on the reference photo. So that's what I'm gonna do right here. So we're gonna go ahead and speed this up so that way you can see this in more of a um, quicker pace than going so slow like I do. And so here we go, uh, just to show that this does not um, necessarily bleed through. Now I'm not for sure if you use a whole bunch of ink on this piece, like a paper, if you were to use a whole bunch, if it does not um, actually bleed through. But once we do this strawberry real quick, then I'll end up taking the tape off and we can look underneath to see if any of the colors bleed through using a whole lot of saturated ink on the paper. So that's gonna be a good test um, also um, once we get finished with this piece. So I got my colors mapped out. I got my greens, got some purples, and got different shades of red and pink in there. Of course, I haven't used the whites yet, but the whites will be um, used for any of the glare or highlights that are on the strawberry. So let's go ahead and jump into the painting. I'm gonna go ahead and um, 
really uh, get the strawberry going. And if it'll be slightly sped up too, just by the way, it's not going to be extremely slow um, going on this, but we're just going to definitely on key points, we're going to highlight on key points on this, on using um, the whites with the highlights on the strawberry. So it will be a little bit sped up, but it won't be completely fast like on my short like videos that I have that's like a speed painting. So it's going to be a little sped up, but not that much. Okay, so the first thing that I always usually start out with is once you got your um, graphite, you know, drawing your sketch already on there, then I'll just go ahead and erase it, usually with my kneaded eraser. So that way I'm taking off some of the pigment of pencil off my paper. And now with the strawberry, I'm just going in and placing these seeds. Yes, I kind of had a, some of the seeds placed out, but instead of drawing them in, I just went ahead and drawed them in. We're using my, um, my pit pen here. And so I just went ahead and put in those lime green uh, little seeds. And then I went around them with a um, little bit darker of a green. I know I don't have all the names here, but it's like an earth green um, color. And that's what I put in and around those little seeds that are on the strawberry. So then after I did that, I kind of wrote in a couple more colors that I was thinking about using. And um, I didn't necessarily use all of them that much. I kind of just tried them out just by putting a little bit on there just to kind of tone some of those seeds down. Then I put in some darker grays or maybe some yellows in there and those little seeds, but they were just so tiny that the only thing that I really used is more of a darker gray, just kind of go around some of those seeds um, to make some darker shadows. So now I'm moving on. I went around each one of these strawberries, like little seeds, and some of it I just kind of left like a pink outline around, like I would put red in the center around it, then I would go around with like a lighter pink, and then that way, if I left it like that lighter pink, I know that it's going to be a highlight. And it's easier to go on top of it with the white to make it a little bit more of a brighter white. So here I am just kind of going back and forth. I'm adding in some um, brighter reds in between here. And then around the seedlets, it's more of a darker red is what I put in. Now here I'm adding in some white already ahead of the game just on top of that pink area so that way it's a little bit more of a brighter highlight. So this white pit artist pen really does come in handy. I do use it a lot. Like I don't think I could just do an art piece with the using the pit fiber pens if I don't have my white. Like it's very important. It's important for highlights. Um, and pretty much I even use it on the leaves. So I will take out the uh, white pit artist pen and use highlights for the leaves on it or I can even tone down colors so if I put the white in here like I'm doing right now just kind of making highlights in and around if it ends up being a little bit too bright that's fine that means I can go on top of it with maybe a pink and I can tone that white down making a different color so it it really does help a lot so here I am just kind of going around some of these little seedlets using some, I'm just switching off between either a brighter red to a mid-tone red to a darker red. And then eventually I will end up grabbing, I think my magenta and using some of the, some of it on the internal part, like around the seedlet too. So here I am back with that white again, putting in some more highlights, kind of shaping in and around with some of my brighter red here. And then I'll have to go and just start branching out. So I'll start um, going around some of these other seeds. Now some of the seedlets, I may end up putting like maybe some red around it. Or after I put in the red around it, I'll even put pink around it. Just so that way I know that there's a little bit of a highlight there. Or if I need to go over it with a highlight, then I didn't layer on top of with a red. 
Now, what happens if you put in red and you're wanting a highlight on top and you use the white? Well, you can still get a highlight out of it. It just may not be as bright of a highlight, but it will still make a highlight, even with it being red and then adding white on top of it. And I would just make sure that if you are doing layers like I am, I'm kind of layering in one color and then I come on top and I go over it again. So I probably go over this at least probably three times, maybe four, depending on if I'm needing to tone it up or kind of tone it down, depending on which way it goes, I do add several layers to this. Now, I usually like to wait until it completely dries in order to add another layer because if it doesn't, you can end up, basically, it could end up making the paper kind of soggy and it could end up like kind of ruining the paper or making it like ruffle up um, in little balls. <laughs> but if you just wait until it dries and just kind of just use a light hand on it. And I haven't had no issues with this paper, but I didn't want to take a chance of actually having something happen to it just in case. But nonetheless, it let me work several layers on it. So I was really happy um, with the amount of layers it took. So here I am going over it with some more of the red going in and around some of these seeds and just kind of branching upward. I did, did use a lot of white on the bottom where the red is to create like this highlight that I could see, but it was more of a pinkish highlight in the reference photo. And by the way, reference photo, I think I've already said it below, it's gonna be posted below for you guys. But if you look at the reference photo, it does have more of a pinkish kind of highlight. So even though it looks a little bit bright, I could always go in and tone that down with a pink um, pink pen. So here I am just adding pink in and around a lot of these seeds. So that way it can easily go back in and put some highlights in. Maybe a little bit brighter highlights. If I need to tone them down, I can. Putting red in and around, like a brighter red, in and around those seeds, and now coming in with a darker red around the center of those seeds. And I'm using this light pink. Let me see here. Let's see exactly what it's called. It's called pale pink. And I'm using that color. I usually find a really, really pale color um, that's really, really light. I will end up using that as being like kind of a bit like a blender. And so if there's something that looks a little rough where it's got some um, kind of like a jaggedy line that maybe I want to smooth out the transition of those colors, then I come in with like a pale color, like that pale pink, and I can actually blend out those colors using that pale pink, which I absolutely love doing. And I've done it before, even with my, um, I did a corn one uh, piece using the same thing, the pit fiber pins, or pit artist, I don't even know, I got it completely backwards, pit artist uh, pins. And I ended up doing the corn and I used a light ivory and it was really super light but I could actually go over some of my colors that looked a little rough you know where it's got like a marker line on it and I want to make it smoother I just use that pale color to kind of go over that and it works those colors and blends them out so that way it's not so um, rough looking so here I use my purples and I use my darker reds to make the shadow. I even came in and used that dark blue right around the edge of the leaf where it will be, and actually I'm going to be doing that, um, where it be a little bit darker. But here I'm just adding in some more highlights with my white, which I absolutely love. Now I will tone down some of this white and it won't be that, that white. So I will tone some of these little white marks down with um, some pink. Here's like my dark blue, just kind of added a couple little seedlets in there and some darker areas underneath the leaf. Now I'm coming through with my pink and I'm kind of toning down some of these highlights that I put in so that way it's not too, too bright. So now we're gonna start on the leaf. Now, 
I'm using just my different color greens, but then once I get through um, adding my different shades of greens in here, I will come in with my white and it makes it more of like a different color green and it looks more a pale green. And as long as I can break these leaves up and make them, you know, put the shadows where they need to go, um, then it makes it really nice to kind of add that other color in. So I do use my whites for a highlight or to kind of pale or change the tone of a color that I already used. Plus that, if you're wanting to brighten up a color, you could also use the white on top of a co uh, color that you already laid down. Use white on top of it. Once it dries, then use like a brighter color and it kind of gives it a little bit of a different tone also. So of course I use some white in there on some of that green. I think it's like an earth green. And it kind of changes up the tone of it and that's what I like on this. So I use some of the earth tone and then use some of the white to give it that different tone of color. And then also what you could do with the white is you can take a, make a little line right there and make some little um, veins in the leaves. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this, probably put my signature like right here. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to untape this and we're just going to look at the back just to kind of see, especially on how this paper, if it bled through or if it didn't. I did use many, many layers on this strawberry. So we're just going to go ahead and check it out by removing the tape. That one more. Okay, there we have it. So let's just see how it did. And there we go. So even with as many layers as I put on, um, the it did not bleed through the paper. So that is super nice. And there is my strawberry. And here is my finished strawberry. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I enjoyed it. There's a big reflection going on. It just fall. It's like a UFO, like something. Okay. Well, anyways, shouldn't have put glass in it and you guys would see it better. So anyways, if you could, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I guess I will see you guys on the next video. <laughs> Bye, y'all.